Hi, everybody. This is Dr. Brett Talley Daniel, MD. I'm a neurologist and a headache doctor. And today I'll be talking about does migraine cause MRI abnormalities? Any physician who sees headache patients and reviews MRI scan knows the problem. The patient has an MRI scan to value some problem. Headache, fainting, visual symptoms, off balance. The radiologist notes numerous T2 microvascular lesions and gives a differential diagnosis of autoimmune disease, hypertension, diabetes mellitus, atherosclerotic heart disease, migraine, or demyelinating Ill disease, which means MS or multiple sclerosis. When the doctor discusses the results with the patient, MS is all the patient hears and focuses on. If the first doctor is a family practice physician or internist, then the patient is shipped off to a neurologist to sort it out. This following talk is a discussion of whether migraine can cause MRI abnormalities. So does migraine cause MRI abnormalities? Migraine can cause an increased number of T2 microvascular lesions. These are referred to casually as spots or white dots and specifically as WMAs, which means white matter abnormalities, or T2 microvascular lesions. As far as currently known, these T2 microvascular lesions are not associated with increased risk of stroke or cognitive loss and have no serious pathological significance. Related questions. What is the incidence of these T2 microvascular lesions with migraine? This is difficult to answer because the studies that have been reported reveal a large variation of incidence, and this lack of consistency likely reflects different epidemiologic technique. Also, reliable medical reports on this issue involve only migraine patients and exclude other medical issues associated with increased numbers of T2 microvascular lesions. Reported T2 microvascular incidence varies from 6 to 10.3 to 12 to 14 to 16 to 43 to 12 to 46 percent. You can see the spread there. What is the incidence of T2 microvascular lesions with various types of migraine? The incidence range is migraine with aura, 8.1 percent, migraine without aura, 2.2 percent, and controls 0.7 percent. What's the differential diagnosis of T2 microvascular lesions seen on MRI scan? Other medical diagnoses that also can cause these lesions are diabetes mellitus, hypertensive and atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease, multiple sclerosis, cell, which means cerebral autosomal dominant arteriopathy with subcortical infarcts and leukoencephalopathy, stroke, chronic small vessel deep white matter ischemic change, and autoimmune cerebral vasculitis. How often are patients given a medical diagnosis of migraine? Since the American Migraine Prevalence and Prevention Study noted the 56% of patients have ever received a medical diagnosis of migraine, it's not surprising that the MRI scan shows lesions due to migraine, but the patient has never been given a diagnosis of migraine. In this scenario, it is incumbent upon the neurologist to establish a diagnosis, which usually is migraine with or without R, and then educate and treat the patient. The lesions are called spots, white dots, microvascular T2 lesions, and WMAs. The name I use in the office many times is migraine freckles because it's gently humorous, and nearly everybody has freckles, so they don't really mean much. What are the medical articles on the frequency of MRI abnormalities with migraine? Cooney et al. writing in Headache in 1996 on frequency of magnetic resonance imaging abnormality in patients with migraine noted that MRI abnormalities with migraine had been reported to be 12 to 46 percent. For their study, a neuroradiologist reviewed respectively 185 consecutive MRI scans of patients diagnosed with migraine by a neurologist. They analyzed age, sex, type of migraine, duration of symptoms, and other medical conditions. The results were that 16 percent of the scans had focal white matter abnormalities. 
among patients less than 50 years old and without hypertension, atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease, diabetes mellitus, immune autoimmune disorder, and demyelinating disease had only 6% of them had these dots. Increased frequency of lesions correlated with age and medical risk factors, but not with sex, type of migraine, or duration of migraine symptoms. Cooney et al. stated in conclusion, the observed frequency of MRI abnormalities in our series is lower than has been previously reported. In many cases, these abnormalities may be unrelated to migraine, which when such changes are discovered in a patient with migraine, other etiologies should be considered. Schwartz et al. in 2004, writing in Archives of Neurology on migraine is associated with magnetic resonance imaging white matter abnormalities, they performed a meta-analysis of seven previous studies regarding the relationship between migraine and WMAs. The authors concluded, quote, subjects with migraine are at higher risk of having WMAs on magnetic resonance images than those without migraine. This increased risk is present even in younger individuals who do not have co-occurring cerebrovascular disease risks. Retrospective studies are needed to determine whether the increased risk of stroke and migraine is mediated or foreshadowed by the presence of WMAs. Toth et al., writing in 2007 in a Russian journal, stated, it was on the prevalence of white matter abnormalities on magnetic resonance images in migraine, stated, the prevalence of WMA was 10.3% among the migraineurs, Patients without comorbidities, such as hypertension, atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease, diabetes, autoimmune disorder, or demyelinating disease, and it was 3.1% in the group of controls without migraine or other disease mentioned above. The data presented here shows that there is a relationship between migraine and WMAs. The association of WMA and the risk of following stroke is not clear. There are well-known studies analyzing the prevalence of silent infarction too, but there needs to be a long prospective study to answer this question exactly, and I'll get a report on that later. Mastiano et al. writing in Neurological Sciences in 2007 on the role of the clinician in interpreting conventional neuroimaging findings in migraine patients stated, Changes in cerebral white matter at CT or MRI have been reported in patients with migraine, especially in those with migraine with aura. Similar pictures may pre- be present, present in asymptomatic subjects, and their nature is not completely understood, but their infarct-like nature is strongly suggested. Uh, clinicians play an important role in the evaluation of these migraine patients in whom these nonspecific abnormalities are present. We suggest ruling out specific syndromes which migraine attacks are associated with white matter changes, and I've listed those before. Uh, their possible cause of role in MRI lesions and enhancing the risk of negative clinical evolution must be considered in each individual case. Asma Bashir et al. wrote in Neurology in 2013 on migraine and structural changes in the brain, a systematic review and meta-analysis. They wanted to evaluate the association between migraine without aura and migraine with aura and three types types of structural brain abnormalities detected by MRI scan, WMAs, infarct-like lesions, and volumetric changes in gray and white matter. So PubMed, as well as references list of identified studies and reviews were used to identify potentially eligible studies through January of 2013 And candidate studies were reviewed and eligible studies were abstracted, and so they made a result of all this, kind of a meta-analysis of the results. Six patient population-based and 13 clinic-based studies were identified. So that's uh, 19 studies. The studies suggested that structural brain changes, including MWAs, uh, silent lesions, and volumetric changes, were more common in migraineurs than in control groups and the, the changes were strongest for migraine with aura. Their conclusion was that these data suggest that migraine may be a risk factor for structural changes in the brain. Additional longitudinal studies are needed to determine the differential influence of migraine without and with aura to better characterize the effects of attack frequency and to assess longitudinal changes in brain structure and function. 
Patients who suffer from migraines have reduced cortical thickness and surface area in pain processing regions of the brain compared to individuals who never have migraines. The intensity of a migraine attack can be so severe, people with migraines sometimes question whether their headaches may be causing permanent damage. While there is evidence that brain scans of people with migraine will sometimes detect changes in the form of white matter lesions, a systemic review of migraine and structural changes in the brain from 2013 indicates these lesions are generally not associated with any neurological issues and don't indicate any increased risk of cognitive decline. Now, looking at the American Migraine Trust 2018 documents on thoughts of migraine and brain lesions, this was a report by Dr. Peter Goesby, a neurologist, professor of neurology uh, at King's Clinical Research Facility in London and the University of California, is a well-known expert migraine for the world. He led a 2013 study that continues to examine migraine's lasting neurologic effects. And he says many migraine patients he sees are unnecessarily concerned about long-term brain damage. Quote, to the best of our understanding, that's completely wrong, he says. There's no association with cognitive function or thinking problems associated with these changes. He felt many persons overestimated the implications of the lesions. Goesby and many other headache specialists say they are confident that the risk of long-term damage is not a cause for concern. Now we have enough data going on, we can study these over a period of time, so there's no cause for concern. Another study they cite to support this is a population-based study for the Netherlands called the CAMERA study. In that study, researchers compared the brain scans of healthy control subjects and the scans of people with migraine with R, and they examined the same subjects nine years later to determine whether people with migraine developed new lesions and whether these lesions were associated with changes in concentration, memory, information processing, and other cognitive tasks, and found that people with migraine had a slight increase in the number of lesions, but there was no evidence of neurological impairment related to these changes. The same changes can occur in children and adolescents. In addition, age is a known factor that increases the risk of these tiny white matter lesions. So the older you get, the more of them you have. The um, EBA study, a French population-based study of migraine and cognitive decline, conducted brain scans and con- con- cognitive function tests on subjects with or without migraine who were born between 1922 and 1932. Again, they found no correlation between the observed brain changes and any evidence of cognitive dysfunction. Sadly, we all get a little bit less cognitively aware, as you might say, with time, goes be said, but there's no difference between migraine patients and those without migraine. When you look at the population-based evidence, the really good studies, there's no good evidence that those changes in the brain are even lesions because they don't cause anything, and there's no evidence at all that migraine does exceed excess damage to the brain. I come back to my freckle statement earlier. But you, we should focus on symptoms and not perceived risks, Dr. Goldsby says. Patients are often concerned <clears throat> that brain changes correlate with stroke or cognitive dysfunction later in life. This is not the case. And Goldsby says, in fact, the stroke risk for migraine sufferers becomes less prominent after the age of 45. Quote, patients with migraine with R face a small risk of stroke compared to population controls. Of patients with migraine without R, he says, because of the low risk, Goesby says migraine patients who have regular normal physical examinations do not need to get regular brain scans. He says that the pain of migraine attacks is the symptom that patients and their care teams should prioritize, should treat the migraine, not the possibility of lesions or the fear of increased stroke risk. It shall also be noted that the presence of these lesions should not influence use of any particular medication. Quote, migraine is an inherited episodic brain disease, Goby Goldsby says, it doesn't shorten life, it ruins it. Migraine patients do not have to be worried about long-term brain damage. It simply doesn't happen. Very clear. Last article here is Mohammed Negam, who wrote in Egypt, Journal of Neurophysiology and Surgery in 2018, on relation between migraine pattern and white matter and hyperintensities and brain magnetic resonance imaging. Um, they found uh, white matter hyperintensities in migraine patients 
and determines its correlation with migraine severity, type, and duration. The results were that migraine hyperintensity was were present in 43.1% of migraine patients, age, presence of aura, nausea, disability during attack, resistance to treatment, and severity of headache and duration of migraine are considered a risk factor for development of white matter hyperintensities. And on my webpage at www.drmigraine.com, I have a picture of an MRI scan from that report that shows a little dot on the right deep area of the brain regarding a 50-year-old female patient, not known to have any chronic illness, presented with migraine with R for a 10-year duration of grade 3 severity. Axial flare MRI image shows a small, single, bright focus at the right centrum semio valley area. It has an arrow on it. So go look at that on my blog, please. All right, I'm through here. Thank you very much for listening to me. God bless all you persons with migraine. Please click on subscribe down there so we can follow each other, and I will see you on the next talk.